Hello and welcome to another day with Science Mom and Math Dad learning about chemistry. I want to give a special thank you and a welcome to you if you're watching the replay and a shout out to those who are watching live. Hello to David from Virginia and Isa from Virginia, Bobby and Chloe from New Mexico, Quinn from Texas, AM from Maryland, Cassidy from Mississippi, Kinsey watching from Illinois, um, and Allison who asked if the dog is going to be on the show today. Not today, but we do bring the puppy on on Friday. So this Friday and Saturday, we're repeating our lesson twice so that those who registered who haven't been able to watch live because of school will be able to watch on Saturday if they want. And we'll bring the puppy on both days. And I want to give a special shout out to some kids who have birthdays today. So Chloe, Athana, see you. Happy birthday, turning 11. Ooh. Happy birthday to Diego, who is turning nine today. And a very happy birthday to Brady, who turned 10 yesterday, and to Oliver, watching from Lakeville, Massachusetts, who had a birthday yesterday as well. Oh, that's so so cool. You guys are getting older, getting bigger, getting happy smarter. Happy birthday, everybody. And another question I saw in the chat, Pickle Obsessed asked, how do we show you the elemental trading cards that we're making? And I want to share just one little example real quick that I loved. We definitely have a theme for hydrogen, you guys. For hydrogen, I'm seeing a lot of <laughs> math dad running away, or this one says, I'm going to get you, math dad. Great. <laughs> Great job on this card, Larry. And I love the colors and colored the back as well, kind of branded those elemental yeah. trading cards. So we love seeing your cards. You can post them on Facebook. The Science Mom Facebook page has a pinned post at the top where you can share them, or you can send them to art at science.mom. I like Facebook better though, because then everyone else can see all the cool work yes, you did. But if someone chooses not to be on Facebook, do we want to force them to get on Facebook? Okay. No. You, you have a point. Science we definitely mom. don't. If you guys so, want to see my my stitches here, yeah. That's this, one of them. Yeah, well, well, one, one of my injuries, uh, that hydrogen. I'm maybe, maybe a little scared. Yeah, be, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are going to be learning about radioactivity. And to dive into radioactivity first, I want to go to the notes and finish that little page that we did yesterday where we gave the assignment to you guys to try and figure out, is it an isotope or an ion? What happens with those, um, with that, that page? So we're going to be going to page 17 of the notes. But before we do that, I think Math Dad is ready to sing our song again. And I, I did want to say, if you do re-download the notes, every once in a while we find typos and we make corrections. So... Yeah, it, it might, might be worth getting those. And in particular, just today, we added the music for the songs at the very end of the we, notes. We did. So if you want the music and you missed the email where we sent out the music, if you just um, download the notes again, the last two pages have the song. Um, math Dad, one more birthday shout out. Kate Hobson has a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Kate. Yay. And I'm going to pull up the lyrics so you can sing along with us. I hope you will. We're going to start with our Electron song. Mm, okay. The smallest particle of all is one called the electron. Take away or add it in, that's how you get an ion. And an ion can be either positive or negative. And type in the chat real, real quick, if we have more electrons than protons, what charge does the atom have? Is it going to be positive or negative mm. if it has more electrons? That's a good question. It's got, so it's the, it's not balanced. So somehow it's going to have a charge. It's going to have will a charge. It positive, will it be positive or, it be or negative? negative? If we have more electrons than protons. Wow, look and at that chat go. Prantham says negative. Dexter Tulin says negative. Aaron says negative. Good job, you guys. And I'm seeing negative. Just fill up the chat now. Shout out to Mindy and M. Chen Wares. Negative is right. And Meredith, so more electrons than protons, you're negative less electrons, fewer electrons than protons, then you'll be positive. Gotcha. Let's sing it one more time. Sing okay. along with us. The, the smallest particle of all is one called the electron. Take away or add it in, that's how you get an ion. Bravo, you guys. And now we're going to sing the next chemistry song, which is about neutrons and isotopes. Mm -hmm. And math, Dad, don't you like how I moved things down? I, so I do. That I do now. We don't have to now try we don't and have duck. To dodge to, to, to be seen. So well, well done there, science mom. All right. Changing, changing the, the neutron, neutron count changes the mass. 
but not the name. An isotope is what it's called. Atomic number stays the same. Bravo. Good job, you guys. So the, when the neutrons go up or, or down, we call those isotopes. And but the name of the element doesn't change. If you add a neutron to hydrogen, it is still hydrogen. If you add a neutron to plutonium, it is still plutonium. But the mass, how much it weighs, that does change. More neutrons makes it heavier. That, that makes sense. And the, the atomic number does stay the same because the atomic number is actually the number of protons. Yes. Which, which wouldn't have changed. Yep. We'll All see right. it one more time. All right. Changing the neutron count changes the mass, but not the name. An isotope is what it's called. Atomic number stays the same. Good job. Good job. Yesterday, we were driving, and we were trying to sing the two songs together. And I have to tell you guys, it's pretty tricky to sing these two songs together. Math Dad and I are not quite ready to do it yet. But maybe, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow we will sing the songs together at the same time and try not to have it be a train wreck. <laughs> All right, so radioactivity science, Mom. The word sounds a little scary. Is, is it scary? Well, it all depends, right? If you were reading super, com you know, superhero comic books, radioactivity sounds kind of exciting because you know you fall into a, a vat of toxic waste and you come out with superpowers, right? Well, in real life, no. In real life, getting exposed to radiation is not going to give you superpowers, nuts, and it's actually going to be pretty harmful. And we're going to learn more about what radioactivity is in just a minute. But first, we need to talk a little bit more about isotopes because it turns out any element can be radioactive. What? Is that, is that right? Anything? Any element can be radioactive if it has too many neutrons or not enough neutrons. That, that ratio, how many neutrons and protons you have, it has to be just right for the element to be stable. And if you get too many, then that isotope is gonna be like, oh no, I'm not stable, and it will decay. And so it's not just the heavy, heavy elements that are maybe radioactive or unstable, they're yes. saying any type of element. Any Good. type of element, wow. any type of element. So let's go to page 18 of the notes. It, it's, page, it's the 23rd page, but it's the one numbered The one 18. with the number 18. Okay, and we filled a few of these out last time, but we didn't get through all of them, and we wanna make sure that we, we do that together here. So let's... And also, I made a mistake on the notes when I was filling out the answer key. I switched my protons and neutrons for one of them, and so I want to be sure to point that out. So we're going to go through this real quick. And if we go through it too fast, if I'm writing faster than you can write, don't worry because you can always come back and with the replay, you can pause the video. And hopefully, you filled this all out yesterday or the day before, and you're just checking your work with us right now. So I am gonna write a little fast, but don't worry about it if you don't write as fast as me, because you can always watch the replay. All right. All right, so we're gonna start out with helium, which is the one we did last time. So if we add a proton to helium, is it still helium? No, because the, the number of protons is what determines the name of the element, right? That's right, it becomes lithium. And it's lithium with three protons, so that, that's what makes it lithium, is that mm -hmm. there are three protons? There are still two neutrons and still two electrons because we did not change the neutrons or electrons. And if we add the protons and neutrons together, that tells us which isotope it is. Which type of lithium is it? Is it the lithium with two neutrons or the lithium with three? Well, you just add those together and we say it's lithium five. And then everybody knows, aha, that is the lithium that has two neutrons. And it is a little bit unstable. So we draw a little kind of silly face here where this uh -oh. lithium is like, uh-oh. YouTube feed is not working. Oh, no. We're, we're getting some feedback. That there's a problem. Uh, let me. We will try and do a really quick troubleshoot, you guys. And if it doesn't work and if we did lose YouTube, we would come back and record this video. Okay. Oh, man. So yeah, try refreshing your page. See if that helps. But yeah. I, I think I think most people seem to be doing okay. So I, I don't I don't know what's what's gone wrong. But we're, we're just going to keep going. We'll keep going. Finger, right. Fingers I'm crossed that I'm it seeing works. enough comments that that people other people are able to watch on YouTube. So hopefully it's just an error on on your end and not for everybody who's watching. But just refresh the screen. Hopefully it'll be all right. 
And I love a comment that I saw in the chat where someone said, helium's atomic number is two, not four. And you are correct. The atomic number is the number of protons. But when we're talking about isotopes, it's really helpful to add protons and neutrons together. Ah, so, and that, so that's, that's why, what the four is. That's what the four is. And that's why lithium five, because three plus two, the protons plus neutrons. Yes. All right, now does this one have a charge? This one does, because we have an extra proton or I should say we have we have one less electron. So three protons, two electrons, we have a negative charge. And I will use my pen so that that little negative charge stays there. Whoops, negative charge. All right. Oh, I didn't switch back to the other view. They, oh, they can't see what I'm talking go. about. Now they can see, now you can see. So our, our five right here, this is protons plus neutrons. And our to, to the person who said helium just has two protons, you're exactly right two protons, but helium-4 is the isotope that also has two neutrons. Pratham asks, can you add infinitely many neutrons and have it be the same element? It would be the same element. It would not last for more than a picosecond. Yeah, yeah. It would, it well, would there's be... not infinitely many of anything. That's so, true. In the entire universe, there are not infinitely many neutrons available, but... But the, the, the more, the more <laughs> but neutrons the, the you add... the idea is the same. Yeah, the more neutrons you add, the more unstable the, the element will get. Now helium-4, the same atom of helium, if we take away a proton, now we have hydrogen. It is no longer helium. But what type of hydrogen is it? Is it hydrogen with one neutron, with zero neutrons, or with two neutrons? It's hydrogen with two neutrons. Mm -hmm. So we say it is hydrogen-3. And we also have two electrons, which means we have a positive charge no nope, nope, oh, nope. i'm sorry it was, I... it was a nice try though saying his mom <laughs> was, he had a 50 50 chance of getting that one right i was thinking about what i was going to say next you guys and i made a mistake sometimes that happens that's right the number of electrons is bigger so there's yeah. a negative charge and you know what i was realizing that that as i was so this one right here that was positive and we wrote negative we did <gasps> i don't know how we did that Oh, sometimes man. sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay and sometimes you'll make mistakes too and that's okay so good, good job those of you in the chat who were pointing out the mistake yes you're totally right <laughs> lithium needs a positive charge if we, if we combine all of our wisdom we can eventually get this right and hydrogen 3 is stable but it is quite rare you're not going to see it very much and it almost looks a little angry there sorry <laughs> i think it's the red pen red pen makes it look a little angry all right we're going to do fluorine and we're going to go just a little bit faster as we go through these because we really want to be able to talk about radioactivity. So fluorine, if we add a proton, is it still going to be fluorine? Nope. nope. We have a new element and that new element is neon. Element number 10. Element number 10 because now we have 10 protons. We still have nine neutrons. So what's 10 plus nine math dad? 19. 19. So we call this neon 19. That's the isotope of neon that we have. And we have nine electrons. So do we have a charge? Yes, we do. We do. Anytime protons and electrons don't match up, we have a charge. We have a positive charge here. All right. And this isotope of neon is not very stable. So we get to draw another crazy face. Even though it's a noble gas, it's not stable. Even though it's a noble gas, it turns out that how many neutrons you have and how many protons you have, that's really important for knowing, is an element going to be stable or is it going to be radioactive? That type of neon is not stable. It will decay, it will break apart. Now up to boron. And I should say real fast, if you're watching this and you're thinking, whoa, science mom, you're going a little too quick, I'm a little lost. This is college level chemistry. Mm. So if you're, if you're following along with us, this is really awesome because I have seen freshmen in college before who have been confused by a worksheet that's kind of like this, trying to figure out, okay, what's the difference between isotopes and ions and elements and which particle does what. So, so that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, pr pretty impressive then if you guys can be doing this. Yeah. Boron 10, if we have boron with five neutrons and five protons, what happens if we add a neutron? Do we still have boron? Yes, because we the do. number of protons is five. We do, so we still have boron because we have five protons. Anytime we have five protons, it's boron, but now we have six neutrons. So this is no longer boron 10. It's boron 11, but with six neutrons, it is stable. And it also has no charge because the protons equals the number of electrons. And this is our first little stable 
So we just Guys, say it's just an isotope. And I, I've decided. It is time to change the color of our pen, Math Dad, because All right. these guys are just looking angry to me with the red. Oh, the red, red yeah. eyes. Okay. Yeah. So there's boron. And nitrogen 14. And this is where I made a mistake on the answer key. So if you looked at the answer key yesterday mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh boy, I'm confused about this one, there was a reason for it. If we add a proton to nitrogen, do we still have nitrogen? No. No. Now we have eight protons. That means this is oxygen. Element number eight. Element oxygen. number eight. Uh -huh. And we have seven neutrons and seven electrons. So what charge do we have? If we have an extra proton than a neutron? One extra proton would mean a positive charge. Positive charge. And eight protons and seven neutrons is actually unstable. Now, how do we know it's unstable? We have to look it up. We know from experiments and a lot of tests that have been done, but you have to look it up and just say, you know, isotopes of oxygen, is it stable? And you look it up and there will be a chart that will tell you. So this would be oxygen 15. Yes. And that's because there's eight plus seven different subatomic particles in the nucleus. So adding up the protons and the nu yep. neutrons. Protons plus neutrons gives you the number that will tell you what isotope it is. Cool. And now oxygen 16, which is stable. What if we add an electron? Is it still oxygen? Yes, because is there's it, still eight protons. Yes, and is it still oxygen 16? Yeah, because the number of protons and neutrons didn't actually change. Yes, eight plus eight is still 16. But now we have nine electrons, so we have a negative charge. Mm. And that little oxygen atom has another neutron, so it or another electron. So it's an ion now. It has a charge. Makes sense. And next, we have copper 63. So, whoa, we have a lot more protons now, and we're going to add an extra proton. So instead of 29 protons, we have 30 protons. Yeah. Are we still copper? If you change the number of protons, it actually changes to a whole new element. Yes, we have a different element now. Now it is a different element, and uh -oh. to find out which element it is, it helps to go up to our periodic table here. Element number so we're gonna scroll 30. up here real quick, real quick, not quack. And we had copper here, 29. And if we add another one and we have 30 protons, now we have zinc. <gasps> Ooh, I sure didn't have that one memorized. I... So we have zinc as our new element. And 30 plus 34 is what, Math Dad? 64. Woohoo! 64. Zinc 64. And this isotope is kind of stable. It's not as stable as other forms of zinc, but it's going to be around for a while. So we'll give him sort of a slightly confused yeah. expression. Yeah. I'm actually pretty impressed with how quickly you guys in the chat are getting these answers. Yeah. You guys are doing a great job in the chat. And again, shout out, um, or I just want to say, if you're finding this a little bit tricky, this is really college level chemistry that you're getting to be able to do, you know, when you're in elementary school. So this is pretty awesome. And so, so you're saying don't worry about it don't, too much if this is, is yeah. hard for you? Or, yeah, if it seems hard, or don't seems worry about it. It's, it's really good to get exposed to this idea early, even if it doesn't quite settle in. No understanding that when you change neutrons, change electrons, and change protons, very different things are happening. Understanding that's really important. And it's okay if it still seems a little bit tricky. 30 protons and 29 electrons. Are we going to be a charged particle? Are we going to be an ion? Yes. Positive or negative? Number of protons is bigger, so positive? Yes, positive. And then our last one, which we did on Tuesday, copper 63. What if we just add a neutron? Are we still copper? Yes. And Two Bridges has it. We are copper 64 now. Copper 64. And this one is unstable, actually. So we had another crazy oh. face. We have 29 protons, we're still copper, but now we have 35 neutrons and then still 29 electrons. So, so no, no, no charge? No charge. It's an isotope. Now, does this have something to do with radioactivity? Because that's it what we're going to talk it about does, today. It does, because here's, here's the amazing thing about radioactivity, you guys. The bigger that you get on the periodic table, if you get all the way down to uranium, Uranium is a radioactive element, and plutonium is a radioactive element. And you may have heard of those talking about nuclear energy or nuclear weapons. 
So let me, in fact, let me share a picture really fast because we had some great art come in for plutonium. <gasps> so great job, Manny and Yvonne. Plutonium is used in nuclear weapons and is used in nuclear power and it is radioactive. And anything that is heavier than plutonium is also radioactive. You get the elements that are bigger than plutonium and they are just gonna break apart and decay and they're gonna release a lot of energy when they do that. Mm. But any element can be radioactive if you don't have the right number of neutrons. So that's something that's important to understand. Interesting. Yeah, and kind of, it's kind of kind of crazy, you guys. So let's let's go in the notes, let's go down and look at the next page. We're gonna, actually we're gonna skip a page. We're gonna go to page 20 because there's something that you need to understand called radiation. All right. Oh. We'll pull up that page real quick. Sorry, I had I had one job. All right. And let's let's do the screen picture in picture so that So radiation is really just energy. And there are some types of energy that are very good and are not harmful and are not going to damage you at all. Like um light from a flashlight. If I shine a flashlight at you, Math Dad, are you going to be scared of like, oh no, it's radiation, I'm going to get cancer? Nope. Nope, because that's visible light. And visible light is not dangerous. Here it is right here. Same with a radio. If I turn on a radio, are you going to be scared about radiation? No. No. But this is a form. These are all forms of energy. And the only difference is how much energy the particle has. If it's going nice and low energy, or if it's going super high energy. And those high energy ones, oh boy, you gotta watch out for those. So UV light from sunlight, that's a natural source of radiation. And if you're outside all day long, every day, are you gonna get damage to your skin from UV light? I have had that happen before, and it's, it's not, not fun to get a sunburn, is it? Yeah, and X-rays, those are another type of radiation that damage your DNA. And gamma rays are the most powerful type of all, and those occur in outer space. This is why it's very dangerous to go into outer space because gamma rays are very powerful and they could damage DNA a lot. Okay, so they're damaging DNA because of the, the high frequency. They have that, high that, energy. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the Earth is in space. The Earth so, is in space. So why, why aren't we getting hit with gamma rays? Earth is protected by an atmosphere and the Earth has a magnetic field that protects it too, which is pretty amazing. But guess what, Math Dad? There are very, very tiny, tiny bits of gamma rays being produced inside things like a banana mm. and you and me. You just said that those are really dangerous. They are if there's too much. But let's, let's talk about bananas because this is a really cool topic. Did you guys know that there is a banana equivalent dose for radiation? So let's scroll wow. down here to this little graphic right here. Bananas have an isotope of potassium called potassium-40. And most potassium is potassium-39. So I'm going to draw a tiny little circle here. This is potassium-40. And they usually draw it with just a little K and a 40. So potassium-40 is radioactive. And it will split apart into either calcium or argon. It will decay and actually become a new element. And when it does, it releases a tiny, tiny little bit of gamma radiation. Wow. Ah! I... But this happens very, very slowly. Any guess, Math Dad, on how many years before half of the potassium in this banana will decay? Ten, so, 10 years? Try a billion. Oh. It's a billion years before half of the potassium in this banana decays. But because there is some potassium 40 in bananas, and in me, and in you. That means that we are all exposed to small, small amounts of radiation pretty much all the time, really small amounts. So now here's the real question for you. Are bananas safe to eat if you're like not allergic to bananas? Because well, I just told you there's some potassium-40 in this banana, a radioactive element that's gonna decay. <gasps> so that sounds really scary, but at the same time, you keep buying bananas from the grocery store. So I'm actually going to guess that they, they're still safe to eat. They are safe to eat. To eat enough bananas that you would actually get a, a harmful dose of radiation from the potassium in the bananas, the potassium 40, you would have to eat more than 900 pounds of bananas. 
That's like 2,000 bananas, you guys. Could you eat 2,000 bananas in one day, Math Dad? I, I could not eat 2,000 bananas in one day. That... And if you did, would you get really, really sick? Yeah. I did. <laughs> Yeah. There would be no more math, Dad, if I tried this. <laughs> <laughs> Radiation would be the least of your problems. Yeah. Okay, so so that there, you'd have to just eat a ridiculous amount before there's any possible health concerns. Yes, uh, but in with radiation, we really want to be able to measure small amounts, and so there, especially at nuclear power plants, they have equipment that actually can measure the amount of radiation that is in a is in a banana, and one microsievert or 0 0.01 microsievert, that's the banana equivalent dose. That's, that's interesting. So they, they're like, hey, am I safe? No, nah, that's only three bananas worth of, of radiation. They talk like that? Like, well, they, they <laughs> B, B E D is what they call it. I don't think they say bananas dose. Oh, but that, that's really funny. Yeah. And um, I, I see a fa fabulous question from Prantham that I'm going to answer real fast. And Prantham said that there could be, is it true that there could be element greater than 118? Mm. And this is an exciting area of chemistry research. And let's go back to our main view math dad. This is a really exciting area of research, you guys. There could be bigger elements. We haven't discovered or created them yet, but it could happen. And wow. that, that, you know, if you go on to go into chemistry and study particle physics, maybe you will be the person who actually creates a bigger element. And some people think that the bigger elements, bigger than 118, that there might be some that are stable. Because element 118, 117, 115, none of those are stable. But there could be bigger ones that might be stable. That's something that a lot of chemists are really excited about and studying right now. Yeah, well, that, that would be really cool. Are you guys ready for our chem mystery? I'm, I'm ready for this. It is time for our chem mystery. We actually have two chem mysteries today. Ooh. So chemistry one, most useful metal, some say, used for breathing each day in machines and tools I am found, sometimes magnetic and underground. Whoa. Let us know in the chat if you know what that, yeah. that is. All right, I'll share it one more time. Is that it? Right there, right? Most useful metal, some say, used for breathing each day in machines and tools, I am found, sometimes magnetic and underground. I have a guess, although I don't know how it would yeah, match good with job. breathing. Marine Man, Margo, Catherine, Super Moose Games, Prantham, Anastasia, Daniel, I'm seeing so many, and Dexter of Thulian. I'm seeing so many people now saying iron, and that is exactly right. The answer is iron. And here is an element card. Shout out to Ibrahim for a great job on this element card. Here's iron, and the little um, avatar says, I'm in your blood right now. Wait, wait, so, uh, so that helps with us to breathe? That, that, that's involved with bringing oxygen to our body? It yeah. is, it is. Iron is in hemoglobin. That's what gives your blood a red color, but iron is also a metal that is used in things like making silverware, or cars and other types of machines. Ooh, that was a hard chem mystery. Yeah, that was a fun one. Are you ready for one more chemistry? Yeah. And then if you haven't, if one of our moderators could please drop that Interpool link into the chat because after I, this- Item pool. Item pool. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> after this next chemistry, we're going to do our polls. Chemistry number two. We all need this for strong teeth and bones, but too much and you'll get kidney stones. Oh. We all you need all this. need this for strong teeth and bones, but too much, you might get kidney stones. Ooh. Right, I'm going to wait for the chat to answer this one. Hmm. And fluorine is a great guess. It's not fluorine, though. Shout out to Prantham. It's calcium. Good job, Prantham. Good job, Prantham. And Stacy and John. Yeah, so calcium is what helps us make strong bones. That's why they always tell us to drink milk. It is, and good job, Raina and Harper and Daniel. But it can help. And Megan. It can cause, or be, it's part of a kidney stone. Well, so, so here, here is a little. Oh, and shout out to Nicole Weir who says she knows the the second chemistry all too well. K kidney stones are really painful to anyone who's ever had kidney stones. My sympathies. Um, and too much calcium can cause it, but it's a little more complicated than that because there are certain things that will cause the the minerals to stick together if you don't and. It's, it's a little more complicated. But if you're wondering what a kidney stone is, it's just a It's a, cri a crystal of calcium and other minerals that's in your bladder. 
And then the only way to get it out is for you have to pee it out and it really hurts as it's coming out. Ouch. So it's very painful. But that is totally a tangent. And now we're going to go to the polls. You guys ready? All right. And I'm make sure we would love to feature more art on our chem mysteries. And so if you are making those element cards, post them on Facebook on the pinned post on our Facebook page or email them to us at art at science.mom. All right. So I did just post the link there. All right. We're gonna going to dive in and answer some questions here. So our first question of the day is all elements have equal numbers of protons and neutrons. Is that true or false? Mm. So it's, I'll give you a hint. It's either true or it's false. That was not much of a hint, Math Dad. Hey, I'm being helpful. <laughs> now, okay. So is it true that all elements will have this an equal number of protons and neutrons? The answers are coming in and Wow, when you look at that bar moving, I'm, I'm definitely seeing a lot of people picking one option and not so many picking the other option. That's probably an indication that they're, they're getting it right. I have my fingers crossed. Fingers oh. crossed. So we, we definitely did talk about this one today. Yes, yes, and we talked about isotopes too. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and reveal the answer. Okay. And we're go, we'll go a little fast on this one. The other ones, we'll try and give a little bit more time. And if it closes before you can finish, don't worry. We have more questions coming right up. That's right. And always answer them in your head, even if you're not going to answer them as part of the poll. All right. And the answer is false. Good job, you guys. Yeah. So, so, so elements like hydrogen, remember the most common form of hydrogen, the one that tried to blow up Math Dad, just has one proton and no neutrons. No neutrons at all. <laughs> and then there are other elements like gold that have way more neutrons than protons. Hmm. Well, and you can change the number of neutrons and you get an isotope. Yeah, we might not even get have time to talk about this today, but you might have heard of carbon-14, so carbon dating. And that's from an isotope of carbon that has uh, four, so it would have, it would have eight neutrons, whereas eight. usually carbon only has six neutrons. Yep. All right, up next, our question is, which type of radiation, which types of radiation are harmful Ooh. to your DNA? So, so you remember that little, that little chart that we were looking at and we said some types of radiation are not harmful and some types are dangerous. So select all of them that are harmful and your options are microwaves, x-rays, ultraviolet light, and infrared light. So. Some of those might be harmful to your DNA. Some of them might not. So select all of them that would be harmful. And if you're not sure, you can take a look at page 20 real quick. Page 20 has the, the answer. So I, I noticed something on there, Science Mom. Uh, what? Well, maybe we'll talk about this in a moment. But uh, yeah, I guess infrared light. That's not something we, we talk about much. So, so maybe you can explain infrared light a little more. Infrared light is heat. And that might sound kind of kind of strange to us, but but think about it. So we can see the colors of the rainbow, right? But did mm -hmm. you know there are some animals that can't see certain colors? Mm. It all depends on how your eye is set up to receive that information. And there is a certain type of camera that you can get that can see infrared light. That's light that doesn't have enough energy for our eyes to see it. The energy is lower than visible light but the way that it looks is it's like you're able to see heat. And if you've ever gone to a science museum that has one of these cameras, you can look and wave at the camera. And if your skin is warm, it looks yellow. And if your skin is cooler, it looks bluish. And when you look at this camera, your nose looks kind of bluish because your nose <laughs> is cooler temperature than your cheeks. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. All right, so there were two answers that got lots of votes, x-rays and ultraviolet light, and those were correct. Good job, you guys. Yeah, so infrared light is not. It's not gonna damage gonna your DNA, damage. and microwaves are not gonna damage your DNA, but that doesn't mean that microwaves and infrared red light are not, you know, it all, it's all the amount. It's the dose that makes the poison, and if you said, okay, here's just heat coming off of a pile of lava, you know, go expose yourself to that heat, I'd say, no way. <laughs> but a small amount of heat is not going to damage your DNA. Cool. All right. Up next, 
select the elements below that are radioactive. And the options are, you've got uranium, radon, polonium, and titanium. This is like a bonus challenge question because we haven't we, talked yeah. about all of these. And it's totally okay to guess. You can just make a guess. One of these we did say is a radioactive element in the in today's class, but the a couple of them we haven't talked about, and you can just give a guess. Give a guess, and then you'll find out. Mm, maybe they're all radioactive. That would be a trick question. This, mm, who knows? That's, we will find so out. So all of them are getting some votes. Oh, was there a fifth option that's off the screen? I don't even remember what the fifth option was. Uh, We'll find out. Oh, oh, yep, molybdenum. Molybdenum yes. is the other answer. And I have to say, that's one of my favorite elements just in terms of the crazy spelling. Molybdenum. Molybdenum. It, yeah. It's a little hard to say. I had to look that one up a couple times because I didn't know if I was spelling it right. I, I think I got it right in the end. Molybdenum. Molybdenum. Oh <laughs> someone, someone should write a tongue twister with molybdenum being in there like five times and then say, say this really fast. Yeah. I, I, I'll challenge you guys right now. Say, say molybdenum. Molybdenum. <laughs> Molybdenum five times fast. Go. Molybdenum, 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 molybdenum. <laughs> All right, we're going to finish and reveal. And the answers are. Uh oh. I, Matt, that I think you marked molybdenum by mistake. Oh, uh, man. We replaced a different one. Molybdenum, answer, molybdenum is not radioactive. Uh oh. Unless it's one of its unstable isotopes. Uranium, radon, and polonium are all radioactive. We're we're gonna fix that in the in the in the replay. We'll we'll fix that so that's marked correctly. <laughs> All right. Next question. Everybody is exposed to radiation. Is this true or false? Hmm. Is it true or false? Everybody is exposed to radiation. So what if I, I stay inside all day and don't ever go outside? Can't get me in here. There could be radon gas in your house that is exposing you to radiation, or you could have eaten a banana that has some potassium forty. Am I giving the answer away? Uh, well, yeah, a little, yeah, but kind of am. but no. I mean, that's that's an interesting. Thing. Is there some way to hide from the radiation? And you, you kind of be, seem to be saying no. No, no. Every and yep. Spoiler alert: Everybody is exposed to radiation all the time. But if the amounts are small, it's not something to worry about. And in fact, with sunlight, there are actually benefits. To being exposed to certain types of radiation because the energy in sunlight helps your body to make vitamin D. And mm. if you are not going outside at all, it's really a good idea to drink milk or orange juice or to take a vitamin that has vitamin D in it because vitamin D is good for your immune system and it's good for your bones to be strong. It's an essential vitamin that you need. And normally the way that our body makes vitamin D is actually through exposure to sunlight. Pretty oh. cool, huh? Uh, that is cool. That is really weird that you'd need sunlight to get a vitamin. Yeah. So too much radiation is bad. Definitely, yes. But we are all exposed to some radiation every day. And certain types of radiation, like visible light, are not dangerous at all. All right. And then our final question. Is it safe to eat bananas? The possible answers are yes, unless you have a food allergy, or no, bananas are radioactive. So... Is it safe to eat bananas? That is the question that you must answer now. Hmm. Math Dad, do you Should know I be scared of this banana? Scared of this banana? Right there. That's the question. Have you ever noticed that if you accidentally bump a banana, it gets brown pretty easily? I have noticed that. Anybody wonder why? Why do bananas get turned brown so easily? It's actually because of chemistry. There is a plant hormone. This is totally a tangent, you guys, but I'll just tell you really fast while people are answering the poll. There's a plant hormone called ethylene that is a gas, and bananas produce a little bit more of this, this gas than other fruits. And so if they get bumped or things, then it's like, oh, more ethylene. And it just is a, kind of a, a cycle where they produce more and more, and they ripen really fast. That is, that's pretty cool. I did, did not know that. All right, let's All right. finish and reveal. And yes, bananas are safe to eat. Boy. Unless you're allergic to them. Don't eat them if you're allergic. So but banana allergies are a thing? Yeah. They're, they're real? Okay. Allergies are real. Yeah, allergies were real. I didn't know banana. Maybe I did know that. But okay, at any rate. Bananas, yeah, I think you can. Oh, I see. 
you have to eat about 14 million bananas to to get radiation poisoning you would have to eat a whole lot a whole lot <laughs> yeah i like bananas but not that much nope now we do not have an actual science demonstration with radioactivity just because a lot of the ones that you can do with radioactivity are not safe but I do want to show you guys the comic on the other page. So if we can go to page 19 real quick, we're going to talk just a little bit more about radiation and decay. So Math Dad, can you pull oh, up that screen real oh, quick? That, that was my cue. That right. was your cue. That All was right. your cue. So remember, we said that <clears throat> uranium, <clears throat> excuse me, uranium is an element that is big and heavy and it will decay. It will split apart. And this is what happens inside nuclear power plants, nuclear power plants. You have uranium and it's going to decay. And when it does, it releases energy and it actually turns into a new element. So here we have this little comic where, you know, water says, how is it going uranium? Uranium says, I'm feeling terrible. I'm unstable and about to decay. And then look out, energy is released and uranium splits apart to be helium and thorium. And then the water says, how do you feel now? Helium says overly positive because this is helium with no electrons. So it's got a positive two plus two charge. And then our poor little thorium says, I'm still unstable. I'm going to turn into seven more elements before I finally become lead. Wait a minute. So the radioactive element is decaying into another element that's also radioactive. Also radioactive. <laughs> yeah. And then it turns into another radioactive element and then another one. And it finally ends up being lead. And when it's once it's turned into lead, then it is stable and it's not going to decay anymore. That happens in real life all the time. Isn't that crazy? But it does happen in slow, small amounts. So if you're like outside and you're on top of some rock, you don't need to be too worried about being exposed to radioactivity. But certain areas that have higher amounts of uranium, there could be amounts where it's like, hmm, you probably don't want to build a house there. You, you should do a uranium mine there instead, or just leave the area alone. So, so if I were to just kind of summarize the message of today, as far as radiation goes, is typically the, the radiation is everywhere, but it's in really small doses. That are small amounts. Usually not things that we have to worry about, but when you go to like the dentist and they're like blasting x-rays at you, you wear like a lead shield so, yes. that you, so that you stay safe. And Kelly, this is page 19. 19 is where we're at. Which is actually the 24th page of the file. But. Yep. And then another thing that I want to point out is that any element can be radioactive if it gets outside of this, this area. So, so what, here, what, what are we looking at here? So I, I'm seeing... Protons versus protons neutrons. Protons and neutrons. So right here when it says silver 107, there are 47 protons. So I go over 47 and then up 60, and that's how we got here. That's how you get to silver. Right. And on, in the printed notes, I resized this graphic and I accidentally made a mistake where it stretched these too far. So if yours looks a little different, that's why. If we had equal numbers of protons and neutrons, not very many things would be stable. So this is one to one. And in calcium, oops. you have, oh, whoops, and we kind of stretched this out too, Math Dad. We're gonna have to fix this graphic one more time. <laughs> so if you have equal numbers of protons and neutrons, for some elements, that's stable, but for the bigger ones like plutonium and gold, they have way more neutrons. And if an element is unstable, it will split apart. And Aaron asks, how much more? It all depends on the element. But in general, the bigger they get, the more neutrons they have. And the very last thing that we that we have before we go to, to a couple, answering a couple questions is the story of the first medical x-ray. And this is a true story, and it's kind of a cool one. So it used to be back in the 1890s, if you got shot and there was a bullet inside you, a lot of times that would mean that they would just cut off a leg or cut off an arm. If you got shot in the leg, they'd be like, oh, sorry, this bullet probably has some lead in it. It might poison you. We don't know exactly where it is. We can't see it. We're just going to have to cut off the leg. That was the standard practice back then, which is pretty horrible, right, Math Dad? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. <laughs> but in 1895, X-rays were discovered, and the person who discovered them wrote about it and put it in a scientific paper, and this doctor in Canada read the paper, and then when this person came in on Christmas Day and had been shot in the leg, instead of amputating the leg, they said, let's try an X-ray, and they were able to find the bullet, 
and they were able to then take it out and the person got to keep their leg and they survived. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. So that is our happy story of a scientific discovery. And now if we can go back to our main view, we have just a couple questions that we will answer and then um, we will see you again either on Friday or on Saturday for edible experiments. So question about why houses have radon detectors. Radon is a radioactive gas. And since it's a noble gas, it's colorless, it's odorless, you can't smell it or see it, but it will decay. And when it decays, it reduces a tiny bit of harmful radiation. And it's produced naturally by uranium. So if your house is on top of granite that has a lot of uranium, then radon gas can get into the house. So that's why they have radon detectors. The question was why radon detectors? Another great question, why can we get x-rays if they're harmful to our DNA? Well, it's all about the dose, right? So if you got x-rays every single day, three times a day, yes, that would be bad. And within maybe you know 10 years, you would start to have health problems from those x-rays. But getting an x-ray once or just a couple times a year, if it's for a reason, like checking to see if you have cavities, the benefit is much better than the risk. Yeah, when the when they actually do an x-ray, they usually just flip it on for a fraction of a second, yeah, it's right? it's really fast. Just enough to take a picture and then it's off. It's yep, it's automated. really fast. And the, the risk from that x-ray is very small, but the benefit of fixing a cavity or fixing a broken bone, the benefit is much better than the risk. Great question. What, what's the first radioactive element, Science Bomb? Do you know? Ooh, the first radioactive element, I would have to look it up on a chart really quick, but there is one element inside the transmission metals that's radioactive. And I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is. I would have is it to uranium look it up. or plutonium, I think. Uranium and plutonium are both radioactive, but there are elements that are smaller than them that are radioactive too, like radon and yep. polonium. Um, astentine is radioactive. Mm. Good question. And then, oh, this is a great one from TET 2005. As long as DNA can repair the damage, are we fine? And I'm glad you brought this up because, yes, a lot of times you are exposed to dangerous things that damage your DNA but your body is able to fix it. And your body does a lot to fix damage to DNA. And it's not unless you have multiple damage in the same cell over and over and over again, that's when you have the risk of that cell becoming a cancer cell. But your body can fix a lot of damage. All right, one more, one more question. And then how much radiation is on earth altogether? This is a great question. Less than is in space because our Earth, our atmosphere, and the magnetic field, they protect us from a lot of radiation. Our sun makes a lot of light, but it also makes a lot of radiation that is has more energy than light. And other stars are also producing energy like gamma waves. And so if you go to outer space, the amount of radiation is way higher than if you're on the Earth's surface and you're underneath the atmosphere. Our Earth does an amazing job of protecting us. Are astronauts in danger? Astronauts, astronauts are, if you are an astronaut or if you are an airplane, airplane pilot and you're spending a lot of time up at high elevation, you actually are exposed to more radiation. And this is why when astronauts go outside to do a spacewalk, they don't just go outside in their pajamas, right? They have on a very thick spacesuit that is meant to protect them from some radiation. And I didn't realize, you guys, we are out of time. We have to end now, but thank you for joining us. And we will see you tomorrow with our hands-on activity. And again, to those who are registered for the class, you can join us on tomorrow on at 10 a.m. or Saturday at 10 a.m. We're going to repeat the